<laughs> you will learn the ways of the horse. That's I thought exactly he wasn't. What we're yeah, I thought he wasn't. He's, he could hold that. He, Get hit again. And the Jedi uses the force for knowledge and defense, never for attack. Whoa. It's not like this. I do not. Calm down. Calm no. down. You're going to be fine. Okay. Hi. Hello. I just want to give a, a shout out to my shirt. Post traumatic growth. Not stress. Okay. Mm. I was at the gym. I've got, I've still got my gym action happening. I went to a Zumba class and we wanted to come on and talk today about, again, just, I was so excited. Yoda, come on. I'm trying to do a thing. I uh, miss you too, Heather. I am. Okay. Oh, it's sweet. So sweet. Yoda. There's no power button. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a minute. Okay, Yoda. Wow. Hilarious. Fun, this is so, not. Yeah, that's what he said? Yeah, he said, fun, this is not. Put okay. me down. He's oh, like, he's got a little like active. Art AI. Yeah. A little AI action. That's pretty cool. Well, hello. I was so excited. Hi, weirdo. I was so excited this morning because, you know, we've been just now really partnering again together in a different way. And I, in a I different way? Well, we partner together in many ways oh, on many okay. occasions. Oh, uh, well, you just <laughs> went there. <Good. laughs> But now we're partnering with our seminars and our workshops mm -hmm. and doing more things together. And so we wanted to come talk to you a little bit about this masculine, feminine um, energy thing again. Because the other day, I don't feel like we really did it justice. We didn't? I don't think so. I think we can do a better job. So Yoda is one of my favorite people. He's not a person. Yeah, you can he's... still hear him. But what I love about him is he said the force is within you. And it really is like a Taoist philosophy. The, 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 I don't what like is, Star what? Wars, but it's a Taoist. I, I'm a I Taoist. understood the words you just said, but in that syntax, but, it makes no sense. I don't no like sense. Star Wars. Yeah. I don't like all the shooting. It's very annoying to me. Like, the shoot them up and the, all the it's, banging and shit. Oh I'm, like, get, I'm like, we went to Star Wars, and what did I do the whole time? What did I do? With the noise, right? I had to wear earplugs because I'm very sensitive. Mm. So... Anyway, we talk about this force being within you, and that's what I love so much, that we're all Jedis, right? We're mm -hmm. all Jedis, and we're, we all have everything we need within us mm -hmm. to do anything that we want to do in this world. We are just born equipped, but we get stuck because we box ourselves into these people that we think we're supposed to be, and we don't know how to access the force. The blessing and curse of language. Yes. So the force is actually the yin and the yang. The yin and the yang together, right? That little show, them, honey. That 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 is it is permanently tattooed on me. That's I've been living this. This tattoo is twenty some odd years old. I'm you, dating myself. Yeah, it's more. You got it when you were a Jedi. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. So. When you have these two, Doug does look handsome today. And do you know what? This is a hot outfit. Okay. Can I just say, look, you are looking sexy today. I like this symbol. It's like dangerous a little bit. Mm. I like the danger in it. Yeah. It's hot. Okay. So I lost my train of thought. Squirrel. I got, I got lost in your hotness. We were talking about yin and yang. Yes. The force. Yin and yang. The force is within you. So here's the thing. What we do is if when we masculine and feminine energy is within all of us but what we do is we cut off parts of ourselves right like we know that we're a holistic being mind body spirit we also know that within our brain we're what, left brain right brain and what's so interesting is like it just it, the squirrel hit me as far as like now all these different talks of like genders everything we're like trying to add more labels instead of just being okay and wide with those labels and understanding them sorry just it made it's okay me. So, yeah, I feel like um, whenever we're thinking about our wholeness, our completeness as humans, we have mind, body, spirit, we have left brain, right brain, we have hemispheres, in our, and then we have masculine and feminine energy. And life to be fulfilled or fulfilling is about integration. It's about integrating your mind, body, spirit, integrating your masculine and feminine or reconciling or reclaiming the parts of us that we've actually shut off from. 
that we've dismissed, that we've rejected or repressed so that we can be fully self-expressed and fully ourselves and live in the places that we feel most comfortable. Some people are naturally left brain people. They, mm -hmm. they function better there and some people are naturally right brain people, but we still aren't half brain. We don't go around with half a brain Speak for yourself. Well, you're not half brain either, right? But but you're not a half wit. You know what I mean? So you have access to both all of your ness, but we reject and repress, and then we say, well, that's not ladylike. That's not a man. That's not a woman. Uh, and, well, and we box our ourselves in, and then we start to hurt. Well, and and that's where a lot of the work we do is, is being work. strategic and knowing when to access those parts. And you know, there's that balance of appreciating where we're at and noticing is this natural or is this adaptive are we doing this because we were told we were supposed to or because this is the natural the natural response and then that's where the discord occurs because then we're not being authentic we're trying to be something because we were told we're supposed to be or the other thing that happens is it worked in the past and maybe at the time it was appropriate, but not. I got Sorry, really distracted by Justin's comment, sexy Jedi danger. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a Jedi, Justin. Yeah. You are. Indeed. You are. Well, I got to say, look at all these amazing people on I here. Know. They're all Jedi. I know. Everybody's a Jedi. We're all, we attract the Force. So we do. Because the I mean, Force you all attract is the force. attracting. So I want to go over with you. Uh, we want to go over with you this masculine and feminine energy so that you can understand these two. Like, they're not... They're, they're, they're like night and day. They mutually arise, but they're opposing kind of forces that, mat, that attract that, each other. And that need each other. They need each other in order to be able to be fulfilled. So le, the feminine energy, we want to think of like water. So if I think about water, what do I picture water to be like? Are you asking what you think? No, what do you think? Oh, you're asking what I think. Oh, I was kind of asking. <laughs> oh, that, well, that's a woman for you. <laughs> so what am I thinking? Tell me what I'm thinking. Okay. So water. If I have to tell you, it doesn't count. You should already know what I'm thinking. Fair Just enough. Jokes. So the, the water would be, uh, I imagine, uh, flow. I imagine kind of um, current moving. Moving. Uh, wide, so, open, fl flexible. Flexible. Yet has times when there's nope. some, uh, no, when, yes. Have you ever done a belly flop? No, because I can tell you, yes, the water is very powerful. Yes. The water is powerful. What we misunderstand, which feminine energy next week, I'm talking about the misunderstandings about it. We mistake it for weak. It is not weak no. at all. It is extremely powerful, mm -hmm. but it is, it uses its power in a different way. It uses its power by being yielding, bendable, flexible. It goes with the flow. It's creative. It the Grand Canyon. Yes. The softest, this, the Dow says, the softest thing in the world overcomes the hardest thing in the world and so the the water can shape mountains it's extremely powerful it's just a different kind of energy and it's also a creative energy it's an open energy it's a receptive energy it allows um, it's intuition and it's, and it's so connected like if you think about uh, the ripples like you know when you drop a rock in it's water connected. it's all connected so yes. those ripples that's go such on. a great analogy yeah. i love that yes yeah. it's that kind of power it's the ripple effect it's also your intuition is your feminine energy your kind of because knowing so inside because you're you so feel the ripple you, you always feel, the force. feel kind of connected it it is also your feelings and so the feminine energy is you wouldn't think about your right brain actually the feminine is the left side but the right brain is where the feminine energy would, would be in, right? It's it's more emotional, it's feeling, it's all interconnected, it's flowing, it's receptive, it's yielding. And so when then when we think about so that's the water. When we think about the masculine energy, we think about the fire. Okay. And when we think about the fire, it's it's direct, it's assertive, it's um, it's dominant, it's aggressive, it's forceful. And it actually just made me think of um, uh, a wave Rigid. pool, like a wave pool. Mm -hmm. It requires the, the force mm -hmm. to then create the waves that go on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you create that huge amount of force. Ooh, and sometimes that, uh, you need the force to create the waves, honey. Yeah. Sometimes okay. you need the force to create the waves. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. I like that analogy. It's logical. It's thinking. So that would be the left side of the brain, but the right side and the yin and the yang. So the yang energy is the logical, the facts, 
it, it wants to um, achieve, it's, also, it, it, it's analytical, it's competitive. Mm -hmm. This is collaborative. The feminine is collaborative. The masculine is dominant and competitive. And that's, yeah, well, I guess we'll get deeper into the <laughs> importance of both and how important they are to be successful in any area of well, life. Well, that's what yeah. we're doing. So when we're partnering together, our whole philosophy is uh, integration. It's knowing where you primarily live or what situation calls for what. I can tell you next week we're going to be talking about um, how we get one of the most wounded, well, they're both wounded. There's the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine. But I can tell you that my fe I lived in my masculine. I know looking at me now, you would be like, oh, wow. But femininity, feminine energy is not about how long your hair is or how, how much gloss you got on your lips or how much cleavage you're showing. That's not feminine feminine energy, okay? Um, <laughs> feminine energy is receptivity. It's openness. It's allowing. It's bending. It's being in the flow of life. It's creative. It's juicy, right? But I lived in my masculine for a long time because I had a very wounded feminine. It got shut down in me, turned off in me because that was slutty. That was dirty. Don't embrace your curves, your hips, your womanness, your femininity. Don't embrace that softness, the subtleness. I grew up very hard uh, in a very um, toxic and turbulent situation. Because that was your survival strategy. And my survival yeah. still was, skill was to go into my masculine energy mm -hmm. and to live in that. Just get it done, power through, suck it up. This masculine energy, suck it up, power through, charge on. I want you to picture the difference between the warrior energy and the goddess energy. And so both are just as equally powerful. But when we think of the wounded feminine or we're in an environment, we have to then man up, right? Our femininity gets suppressed. So we man up and then we reject and renounce anything that feels feminine because it doesn't feel safe. Well, and if you think about it too, us warriors on here ultimately we're we're stepping into that warriorness for our goddess to create an environment for that flow that we can ride that current and i don't mean that sexually as it may have sounded Sounds nice. but know. but that's really the the energetic space the warrior can create um and that's part of the integration part of the alignment so when I'm too much in my masculine part of me, I don't feel at home. And how do I know that? Because for relief, I'll do anything to be wild and free and check out. In the past, that was drinking. That was being irresponsible. That was binge eating, trying to find my pleasure somehow because I wouldn't allow that piece of me to surface and come. You know, the, the feminine energy lives in the five senses. It lives in touch and taste and smell and healing and it lives in that kind of erotic sensual place and people get it twisted because they think oh then that's like the porn star culture that's a performance that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about being enveloped and enraptured in your senses and life and your pleasure and that way for for that feminine energy right but if it's if it's um traumatized or repressed or rejected then we go we, we go where we feel like we need to go in order to survive. But if I spend too much time there, then I, I don't know how to, to be, I, I don't feel like myself, right? I feel very unhappy. And, a, and a, a masculine dominant partner who spends too much time in their feelings or too much time in their senses will, or too much time won't know how to deal with that emotional, irrational, kind of all enveloping feeling. And they need to be logical, linear, and they feel most at home there. And so it's not about if you're a woman or a man. There are a lot, there are many women who feel most at home in their bodies, in their masculine energy. Mine was a wounded feminine that thought she felt most at home in her masculine power suit energy. Okay. But I was, I didn't, I didn't, I was repressing the part of me that was receptive and open and able to allow the things that I wanted to. And, to, and what's so inter interesting about this. I was scared. This this whole conversation is, the power in it. is that we're, we're still using labels. Yeah. And what this real conversation is, is more of an awareness and an enhancement of the labels as it were to like, you know, as an example, let's use this bowl, right? So this bowl could have one thing in there or could have 50 things in, in there. And the labels that we like the, the meanings and all that, that we give it, will give the the more of an assortment, the more um, value to it. And that's the integration of all of these pieces and all of these parts, if that makes sense. I, I just, it, it just occurred well, to me we're having a conversation 
about labels that can sometimes be the problem in the first place. So we need to be more, the, the purpose of this conversation is to kind of break some myths about what those labels. Integration mean. looks like knowing where you feel most at home. And if you're repressing or rejecting your femininity or your masculinity based upon on a model of the world that you learned that it was more acceptable because of woundedness, toxicity, trauma, that you got into this situation where you feel like it's just not safe to be me. Right. It's really not safe. And so we want to say, okay, where are we? We call that codependency, right? Behaving how I think you need me to behave in order to get love instead of how being behaving how loving me. And, and then being an expression of love and that outpouring onto you. There's still time to sign up for the codependency four week course that we're teaching starting March 5th on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. So if you want a deeper dive to come be in a small group and be with us, it's, it's the most cost effective way to work with us for four weeks, kind of like in a little tiny group setting. So you really right. want to sign up for that, we'll put the link. Um, but again, it's not about rejecting or repressing parts of you. It's about learning how to accept them, accept and call forth and release the parts of you that are going to bring more joy, more bliss, more happiness, and start to live there more frequently in the place in your masculine or feminine energy that feels most at home to you. And then you'll be kind of happier, right? That's the goal, right? We all just want to be happy at the end of the day. And the, the happiness comes from releasing all of the 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 turmoil within from not being just okay with where you're at and then using it, utilizing it. And how it shows up in marriages and in relationships is if I'm a woman that has repressed my femininity and I feel like I'm living primarily in my masculine energy because that's what's most excited, that's what I like the best. And I'm lying to myself and saying, no, I just am not interested. How do you know? You feel dead inside. You feel numb. You don't crave sexuality or sex. You don't want to be looked at at all as being like attractive or sexy at all. That scares you. Those You're afraid of your own body. If I asked you right now to put your hand on your body and touch yourself, would you have a hang up about doing that? You don't own the body you live in. You, you, other, you, know, you, you, you own others' opinions of your body or you repress or reject it. And so, again, the feminine energy lives inside of those senses. The, 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 the feminine is living in the energy. It's somatic awareness. It's that gut instinct. It's knowing and feeling and sensing everything. Masculine energy doesn't give a shit how it feels. It does what it needs to be done. And so there's a time and place for that. But if the male goes, goes, goes in the masculine energy and it, I just go power through, he'll feel empty because he's not engaging in his femininity or his feminine side where he's able to embrace his emotions and feelings, his creativity, his spiritual connection, his somatic awareness. And so also the male dominant, the masculine dominant energy that's attracted to that feminine, that warm receptive will crave it within. So he feels like he's experiencing it. And the safest way to experience it is with a feminine embodied partner, because then it's okay to experience it, right? You are not have to become it. He doesn't have to go and become the feminine embodiment, but he finds it well, in his partner. That's that, where again, or she the, the idea of riding the wave of that idea of that the the masculine the the man the in this again just in this conversation again, it's, a, it's not a gender it's not, type because yeah. you could have a same sex relationship right and one will embody this energy primarily or this energy and very primarily often, that's why attracted to each other right very often you see that in it's same sex relationships there. there's there's going to be that polarized right. energy there has to be to, no on, in, in some context, right? It's not, again, these are, we're making some global generalized statements that are necessary for the ability to have the conversation, right? But I like don't the live day in my, and the night, the right. moon and the sun. I don't They're, live in the day all the time. And I don't live in the dark all the time. Okay, I, I vacillate between light and day. That's why my logo is that infinity symbol because we're always embodying the masculine and the feminine within us both. And and there's a time even in my in our business where what does this call for? The fire or the rain? The fire or the water? What do I need to bring today in order to make the best of this situation or to 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 be the happiest in this moment? There are times when it definitely calls for the fire, honey. You're gonna burn it down, right? And there's the times is, when it calls for. Burning both out. Powerful. Are you burning out because you're burning it down all the time? 
Are you, are you, you know, and so the feminine is just as powerful. That feminine energy is just as powerful. It's just it cultivates in a cultivate cultivated it in a different way. Right? I get so excited because I'm just like tripping over my words. But um, I can tell you next week we're going to talk about the the wounded feminine, um, the the toxic feminine, the rejected feminine, and how I was able to over the last really the last three years I've been on this journey to, as a reclamation to my femininity, to my sensuality, my sexuality, to, to really allow myself to be unleashed, unlocked, and, and live in that energy more often. And I can tell you since I've done that, not only am I happier in my relationship, but I'm also happier in my business because most of the time in my business, I operate in my feminine power versus my masculine dominant drive, drive, drive energy. It's more feminine energy is more create and collapse. It's cyclical. It follows the rhythms of the moon, like the cycles of your period. It like you're creating and collapsing instead of constantly pursuing, pushing and going. Um, oh, I said a lot. I just yeah, you, you, you did. So <laughs> why do men feel the need to hide feminine energy? Well, Bradley, the conditioning. Can, yeah, think about it. How many times are men rewarded for exposing it? Right. What happens is, is they get, and last time we talked about your feelings to your boys. Yeah, it's 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 not celebrated. It's not done in a way that people. I mean, that's why you know we have men's retreats where we can sit there and talk about stuff because we have to go in with the presupposition that now it's okay to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you you know the, one of the gifts that you can give yourself is surrounding yourself with people who allow you to have those conversations and there there isn't that judgment what it is is it's that condition the judgment mm -hmm. that we've just been living in and then the fear of saying something that may be construed as feminine speaking from a man that may be construed as feminine now then the, the other thing i don't want to cast dispersions but growing up there's some people like oh you know that's gay or why are you be and then now you're questioning my sexuality because i had a feeling and now, yeah. it, and then all the shame that may be attached to that, depending on how you were raised, and you know, then it, nothing's okay. So now, it's, now you're questioning everything, which then becomes a self fulfilling prophecy. So in order to survive, men then shut down because they're not rewarded for opening up, and then they just end up surrounding themselves with people who do the same. And now we end up having a, a cycle that we're doing our best to to shatter. And when I met you, um, you were the first man I'd ever met in my life that embodied the integration of all of your energy, of the masculine and feminine energy embodied in a way that was um, you're sensitive, you're soft, you're yielding, you're flexible, you're flowing you're creative, you're passionate, all those juices are unlocked in you, right? Um, the creativity, all those things, that feminine energy is unlocked and unleashed, and then the masculine energy is fully present, obviously. <laughs> and that's your dominant energy that well, you're again, in, it's a, which I, is the fire. That's why you're always, everything you do is fire, you make fire, you have people walk on fire. That's why fire. you have people eat fire because you're the fire. I used fire in our presentation the you other night. Fire the the, uh, you're the yeah, fire yeah, guy, right? Yeah. Because you bring the fire. Um, but thank God you also um, allow yourself to be in that space where you can share and be creative and be in the spirit and connected. Well, what's so interesting is in, in so many respects, I guess one of the best ways to, to address it is it's then becomes a, just a question of presence. Mm -hmm. where it's not it's not a judgment I'm not mm -hmm. and, and by the way just reason, I'm not sitting like when I'm in those moments it's not like I'm sitting like on a, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be feminine, feminine right now or... yes what would be the best way like okay. I, I'm not doing that yeah. I'm just being present right. in the moment and I guess the way again using that analogy I love the analogy of, of a of the current right the create the wave and then ride the wave and, a, and the divine feminine and the divine masculine is really like a mother, father, a divine mother, and a divine father. And within that relationship, we're always protecting, nurturing, caring for each other in this constant ebb and flow of energies. And sometimes if there are, we can both, we both have feelings. We both have fire and we both have water, right? We both have that in us. Obviously, I need to know when to bring the water when he's in the fire and when to bring the fire when he's in the water. And so th there are times that that's, 
you and know, that's a probably time a when... better way to just, and maybe that's the best way to think of it mm-hmm. is like fire, water, rather than masculine, feminine, fire because there's water. so much energy fire attached to right. emotions attached right. to is that feminine? Well, it's, it's water. Yeah, it's water. <laughs> right. Water's powerful. Black like and white. Said, it'll yeah. knock you over, man. It'll yeah. like, get in the current. Okay, honey. Is that, but feminine is powerful. You know why we pigeonhole the femininity to mean weak and it is more and, and, and that energy, in my opinion, I feel more powerful when I'm in fully embodying my feminine energy. I try because I'm happiest there to live in that feminine energy. Most of the time, that's where I feel that personally the most powerful. Um, I, I, I feel the most divine download, the most connected, the most on fire on, on most on fire when I'm living over here. Right. right. So I feel most depleted and lost and just tired and exhausted when I'm in the fire all the time. It just doesn't work for me. You really have to know yourself and part of this process is getting to know yourself, right? Where you're living and and, you're and not judging it, just right. accepting it. Accepting like, oh, okay, cool. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? What do I want to celebrate? Right. We celebrate what works and then add what's missing. Right. Um, and yeah, to Radley's point. Yeah. So uh, young women, especially sometimes flee. flee from the nice guy and then they complain about men being jerks. I think it goes back to our hardwired caveman tradition. Yeah. It's, it's, well, all this is conditioning. Well, this women whole- love a nice guy. OK. What they don't love is a doormat. OK, because there's no fire in a doormat. Right. So a woman. A woman wants, here's, here's, I think what a lot of the time, what you're talking about with the nice guy, here's this phenomenon. And I heard it explained by a client the other day who had, who broke up with somebody because what happened was he, a woman wants to be, um, not necessarily the, the center of your world, but, but like the, one of the most important things in your world, well, right? It's important, important to have in most important person, but not the most important Thing necessarily I love I get charged up and fired up when I when he's in his full um, passion his purpose he's he's really you know um, out there doing what he loves to do putting his energy out there if he sacrificed necessarily his purpose of his bigger message so he could wonder how I'm feeling and be I would not be attracted to that and sometimes nice guys are misconstrued and misunderstood you're really being codependent you're not being nice and so if you are having that problem Radley sign up for my for our codependence course that's coming up because you could be thinking you're nice, but you're really one of my eight personality patterns. I call them attachment personality patterns and codependence. You're being the fixer or you're being the people pleaser and you're bending too much. And so I want to help you. There's a fine line. How do you figure out what's authentically you and what are you doing? Cause you feel like you have to do that in order to get love. All of those patterns and everything that's whatever thoughts you're having, everybody who watches this right now, these are just the filters that we're running based on the conditioning that we've experienced over the the last, however old you are, the decisions that we made at young ages, right? Depending on who were your caregiver, what was your feedback? Did you survive because you had to man up or did you survive because you had to shut down? Were you a, like I grew up a bit of a, a people pleaser myself because I wanted to make sure that everything went well. You know, I went no one, no, nothing too crazy. Make sure that people were happy and enjoying themselves. But that can be exhausting because and as a people pleaser, who doesn't get pleased? And you're not in your power. Right, you're a people no, pleaser, right? Not you're not in your power, your authentic power. And then a lot of the people that I work with end up saying, well, then I'll just, I don't want to be an asshole. But I'm like, you're, you're such a sweetheart. You'll never be an, you can't asshole. Be an asshole. You can't, no matter how hard you go. But there is a line, a line because men in that position of the people pleaser and the nice guy are afraid of their masculine energy. They've repressed it because they feel like it's too dominant. They had a figure in their life nine times out of 10 where the man that was representing that masculine was scary or that they learned that that masculine hurts women because it was a wounded masculine. And so they've repressed the piece of them that's assertive and dominant because they don't want to scare people off or intimidate people. And then well, I could use my example. The way I did it growing up was I would, uh, I was the getting, you know, arrested, getting, you know, just breaking, breaking stuff, right? Like whether it be stuff, like literally stuff mm-hmm. that I'd be able to dominate and break and show my manhood. So you couldn't dominate your own life, so you put right. your hole in a wall. Right. Yeah. 
I, I've shared it many times. I, the house I grew up in, every I believe every wall in that house had been repaired or replaced at some point. Yeah, not right. Happily married for 20 years, but years ago, Tony Coach explained to me that I'm 60. Sent weighted to my femme and my wife, 63 masculine. It works well. Great. You know, I was just telling Doug this today. I was saying that um, some marriages are are perfectly aligned because they are have worked it out that way where the the woman pri one partner i say woman and man one partner primarily lives in their masculine and one primarily lives in their feminine and they're comfortable in that how do you know it's broken and not working you're on the brink of breaking up with each other you keep attracting the wrong people over and over again you have a sexless relationship where and you're finding yourself in outside relationships you're that fill seeking the gap. outside you're flirting around you're doing whatever you're you avoid sex you you wanted to get it over with. Uh, sex is the first place that this issue is of codependence or this challenge is going to show up, and it, that's a really good barometer. Some people just think I, I have women that in my practice that say I just don't like sex. That's a lie. All right, that's a lie. We tell ourselves and make it okay that we've repressed our own sensuality. It's a survival mechanism. It's a survival mechanism. Well, yeah. I just don't like it. No, honey, you don't know how to tap into your own pleasure because you're cut off from that story. Part of you. We will tell. Right. Exactly. So we just wanted to pop on quickly. Hopefully this was helpful for you today. Thank you so much that people were saying somebody, I think, is it Mary or Mari said that she heard me speak Mari, the other yeah. night. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That was really fun for me. Um, so join us and for the upcoming codependency workshop, if that's something for you, if not, we'll see you next Tuesday. And if this was helpful, uh, you know, feel free share. to share it. Yeah. For, for others. And, um, also feel free to send us any questions, any things that you want us to cover because, this is um, this is our our passion, our pleasure, our privilege to have this opportunity. So we we love you for that. Let's Thank be you. fully integrated human beings. That it really is the revolution. You know, yep. we call our company revolutionary growth. How do you grow? You integrate. Integrate. It's all you the parts come alive. You integrate. Um, all right. We love you so much. We hope you have a beautiful day today. We'll see you next Tuesday. Right on. Bye. See you soon. Bye.